Now, tonight we're going to start talking about becoming a super CFD trader. In tonight's class, I'm going to use the term security. I might use the term asset. I might say Bitcoin or I might say the euro. I might say Apple. But what I'm talking about isn't a specific stock or commodity or currency. I'm talking about all publicly traded financial instruments in which an open market exists. But it gets very, very boring just saying security, security, security over and over again. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading. Typically, an investor takes a longer term position while a trader takes a much shorter term position. In any case, the concepts are pretty much the same. But tonight, we're here because we're all looking to be online traders, which entails trading, not investing. Now, in tonight's class, I have some special presentations I put together for you that I'm going to share with you. In the recorded version, you will not see these because they are not recorded twice over. So if you want to see these presentations again, these little presentations when I pop them up in tonight's class, if you go to YouTube and then look up the channel, not a search, but look the channel, for Forex and CFD education. That's the name of the channel. Once you go there, then look under the playlist and find CFD trading and you'll see all the presentations for you to watch there at your convenience. Also tonight, if you look on your screen, you'll see a couple little tabs that allow you to download handouts. I have put together three very comprehensive handouts for you. One is called Day Trading Guide Handout. It talks about, and because even though we're not really day traders when you're trading CFD, you're trading your short-term traders. It's the same thing as virtually day trading. And I put together this whole entire guide that goes over all the terms, all the ins and outs, what leverage is, what margins, what a buy and a sell is, what an ask and a bid price is, so you understand it and you have it at your fingerprints. I've also given you the Trading Cryptocurrency CFD Guide that explains how you can trade this new asset through CFD format. And the last is a guide on exactly what a CFD is. There's a lot of people are trading online and they have no idea that they're actually trading CFDs and how you would trade CFDs. CFD stands for contract for difference. But if you don't download these right now or through tonight's webinar and click on those little download buttons, you won't be able to get them again because they're not available in the recorded version, only to live participants. So the question that we all want to ask ourselves is CFD trading right for me? Because we all hear about online trading. And generally, they talk about Forex. They talk about commodities. They talk about futures. It all comes down to almost everybody are trading CFDs. Now, CFDs is ideal for investors who want the opportunity to trade and make a better return on their money. However, it contains significant risk to your money and is not suitable for everyone. We strongly suggest trading on a demo account before trying it out with real money. And if you want to try a demo account, you go to LegacyFX, www.LegacyFX.com, and you can open up a demo account while we're right in class. But CFDs are right for you if you're looking for a short-term opportunity. CFDs are typically held open for a few days or a week. That's about it. They're perfect for people who want to make decisions on their own. You want to diversify your portfolio. You want to be able to trade in 4,500 global markets. You can be active or passive, and you can trade as little or as often as you want. So what are these funny things, CFDs, that we're talking about? Well, CFDs, first of all, are regulated. They're not some harebrained scheme from out in left field. They are simply contracts. They're contracts for difference. They are the world's fastest growing trading instruments. A contract for difference creates, as its name suggests, a contract between two parties, you and your broker or your broker's liquidity provider, speculating on the movement of an asset. 
a CFD mirrors the price of the actual asset. So the term CFD stands for contract for difference. It consists of an agreement or contract to exchange the difference in value of a particular currency, commodity, share, or indice between a time at which a contract is open and a time at which it is closed. Now, the fact is, since you're short-term traders, okay, you want to buy Apple. Say, hypothetically, Apple selling at 179.50. Okay. Well, if you want to buy a share of Apple, have that share delivered to you, have ownership of that share, you got to pay the 179.50. And it's a time-consuming process. It's a cost of a process of actually putting it on Apple's books, you know, issuing the, the share and certificate, sending it to your broker, your broker putting it on file, you being able to demand it if you want it, and you actually owning those shares. Now, when you actually own that share, because you've dished out 179.50 for it, you could take it to your bank and get a loan against it. That's fine if you're looking for your investment portfolio. You're looking to buy a good deal of stock and put it away for a later time. But the fact is, when we're trading CFDs, we're trading, trading, not investing, in a very short time of period. And we're simply trading the difference in value. So if Apple is trading at 179.50, when you bought it today at say 12 noon and it was trading at 179.75 at three o'clock when you closed it, you would simply get the 25 cents per share difference. Now that's a lot of work for 25 cents. Okay. But the fact is you opened and closed it in one day, but CFD trading provides you leverage also. That means you can ramp up your trading by buying a lot more of Apple than what you than the 179.50. Okay. Now, the fact is, that's really nice if you bought Apple at 179.50, sold it at 179.75. Now, if you called Apple on the phone or called your stockbroker and said, I want to buy Apple, that's not never a problem. You can buy Apple. But what if you thought Apple was going to fall? You want to sell Apple because you think the price is high right now and you want to sell it because it's going to go down. Well, you can't call Apple and say, I want to sell you 10 shares of, of Apple stock right now. They're going to say, you don't own it to sell it to me. But when you see you're trading CFDs, you can sell it now because the contract has to have a buy and a sell. So you can sell it now at 179.50 and buy it when, the when you want to close your contract at 179. And guess what? You got the difference between the 179 and the 179.50. If so if you buy now, you got to sell it to close out your position. If you sell it now, you got to close it. So all it is is a understanding or a contract. And you're, it's not a contract made up for you. It's a contract everybody is, is trading on. But it mirrors the actual price of Apple. So the contract payout will amount to the difference in the price of the asset between the contract is open and the time it is closed. If the asset rises in price, the buyer receives cash from the seller and vice versa. There is no restriction on the entry or exit price of a CAFD. No time limit is placed on when this exchange happens and no restriction is placed on buying first or selling first. CFDs are traded on leverage to give traders a trading power, flexibility and opportunities. So to simply put it, CFD trading lets you speculate on the price movement of a whole host of financial markets, including indices like the FTSE, the DAX, the CAC, the, you know, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ. It allows you to trade shares like Apple, Facebook, and whatever. It allows you to trade currencies, whether it's the euro, the pound, commodities like gold, oil, coffee, or orange juice, and bonds. Regardless of whether prices are rising or falling, you can trade in either direction. So CFDs are considered a derivative product. This means that you don't actually own the underlying asset. You simply speculating on whether the price will rise or fall. And that's your contract. Your contract is based on the price of Apple and the difference between the price now and the price later. If you said it was going to go up, you would buy now and sell later. If you said it was going to go down, you'd sell now and buy later. And this is a long, legal, drawn-out contract. Okay, 
it's like I said, it's not designed, you know, you don't call your broker and he makes one up for you. These are standardized. They are regulated. They are registered. They are because they are traded in the global markets because your broker doesn't just provide. It goes through his liquidity provider. Okay. So it's not something that is just being made up for you. So what are CFDs based on? An equity index is a financial asset that represents the value of a particular section of the equities market. So like if you were buying Dow Jones Transportations, one of the most popular equities index, for instance, is the S&P 500. So what is the S&P? It's the Standard & Poor's top 500 shares. They are, so it's hypothetically, each S&P index is the total value of those 500 companies, one share of each, what makes up that value, which represents the overall performance of the 500 leading companies publicly traded in the U.S. stock market. If you trade the U.S. 500 CFD, you can decide whether you think the overall stock of these 500 leading companies will increase or decrease, and then you place your trade accordingly. With others, index CFDs include the U.K. 500, which is the FTSE, the U.S. 30, U.S. Tech 100, France 40, which is the DAX, the Europa 50, the German, the German 30, which is the CAC, you know, you have the Hong Kong 40, the Japanese 220, the Japan 225, or the Nikkei 225, and the Australian 200. Or you can buy a commodities future. A commodities future is a financial asset that represents an agreement to buy or sell a set amount of a commodity like platinum, copper, oil at a predetermined price. So, for instance, if you are buying gold, one contract of gold in the futures market, not in CFD, is 1,000 ounces of gold. So if gold is trading at $1,400, you'd multiply, I'm sorry, it's 100 ounces of gold. And at $1,400 an ounce, that's $140,000. One contract of gold in the futures market. Okay. Gold is trading at $1,400, whether it's in a futures market, whether it's in a CFD. CFD, you decide how much of a CFD you want. You want $20 worth? You want to invest $50? You want to invest $200? Don't care. Because what you're saying is you're not buying a contract of, a futures contract of gold. You're buying $1,400 worth of gold. You're buying $1,800 worth of gold. You're buying $22. So you can invest what amount you want. Now, because the prices of commodities fluctuate over time based on supply and demand, a commodities future allows traders to speculate on the price movement of that commodity. If you trade a platinum CFD, you can decide whether you think platinum futures prices will increase or decrease and then place your trade accordingly. Other commodity CFDs include copper and oil, WTI and Brent oil. You can also trade stocks, currency, and of course, cryptocurrency. You can trade Bitcoin against the dollar. You can trade Bitcoin against Ethereum. So whether you trade an index CFD or a commodity CFD, from you will place your trades at the same platform. And this is the nice thing about CFD online platform, especially like Legacy FX, is you don't have to have a commodities broker, a, a crypto broker, a stock broker, a index broker. Everything is available to you on one platform. You trade it the exact same way from the same account. So you could be trading Apple one minute, the FTSE the next minute, and trading the Euro, US dollar, and gold an hour later, all out of the same account under the same terms. Now, a lot of people get a little bit confused because Forex trades are CFD since you're not actually buying the currency. A lot of people mix up Forex. Forex is, just stands for foreign exchange. It's trading currency. But again, if you went to your bank or went to the commission stand and you wanted, you know, or you told your bank convert $100,000 out of your bank account from pounds to euros and they put it into your account, then you are trading Forex. But you're not actually doing that. You're, you're buying, you know, you're putting up $1,000 to secure 50,000 euros, or $50,000 worth of euro. And so you're buying a contract. You're not taking physical delivery. You don't want to walk around with 100,000 euros in your pocket. 
So let's take a very simple example. Let's talk about stock investing as an example. Okay. You'd like to purchase 10,000 shares of Barclays. It's priced at 280p, which means that the total investment for you to buy the 10,000 shares is 280p times 10,000 or 28,000 pounds. Easy calculation. Now that doesn't include commissions and other fees your broker charge you. Now when you're trading CFDs, there is no commission. You have a spread, but there is no commission involved. Now this confuses people a little bit. Okay, we'll go back to it in a second. Let's finish talking about the Barclays and we'll go back to commission versus spread. So we're not calculating that into your buying 28,000 pounds of, or the 10,000 shares of Barclay. So, but in that exchange, you would receive the stock certificates, legal documentation that certifies ownership of the shares. In other words, you have something physical to hold in your hands until you decide to sell them, preferably for a profit. You actually have something that you could take to your bank, like I said, and take a loan against it. You can put them under your pillow. You can give it to your grandkid. Okay, you physically have them. With CFDs, however, you don't own those shares of Barclay. You're simply speculating and potentially profiting from the same movement in the share price. I'm just looking for my Barclays breakdown again. Sorry about that. Well, we'll go through it step by step. Okay, so in the real world, you would have had to dish out 28,000 pounds. In the CFD world, you said, I want to buy those 10,000 shares of Barclays at 280p, which is still the same $28,000, 28,000 pound investment, but your broker will sell them to you at leverage. Okay. Means I'm not going to do the calculations right now, but hypothetically, at 50 to one, you'd have to put up $1,400, 1,400 pounds. So you put up 1,400 pounds and you control those same 10,000 shares of Barclays stock. Now, if that Barclays stock goes from 280p to 300p, guess what? You made 20p. You made 20p per share times 10,000 shares or you made 2,000 pounds. So you only outlaid out of your pocket 1,400 pounds you get that 1,400 pounds back as well as your 2,000 pounds profit. But if the market had fallen 20p, you would have lost the 2,000 pounds, but you would have subtracted the 1,400 pounds you paid and you still have to dish out another 600 pounds. But either way, you made the same profit or loss as if you had purchased them. But with CFD trading, you, your capital outlay is a lot smaller. They're also tax efficient. In other words, if you're in the UK, you do not pay stamp duty. They're leveraged products, which means you use a small amount of money to control a much larger value position. When you open a CFD position, you select the amount of the CFD you would like to trade and your profit will rise in line with each point the market moves in your favor. So another simple example. Okay, let's go back to the commission versus the spread. Now, if you can go back and think about a, a handful of years ago, and you were going to go on a holiday, you'd go, you know, say you know you're you're going from you, the you, um, the UK, you're going to the US. So you have pounds in your, you know, the UK and you need dollars in the US. So you go to your commission broker or you go to your currency broker that's got the little commission stand on the street corner or your bank and you say, I want US dollars for my 1,500 pounds. They do the calculation 
in the old days, they would do the calculation. They would give you the market value of the dollars. And so they'd say, hand you out $2,000. And then they would charge you a commission of $200. So you'd get your 2,000 US dollars and you have to give them back 150 pounds commission. Today, when you go into the currency exchange, you see a sign. We'll buy for this much, we'll sell for that much. That's a spread. What they're saying is the dollar is trading for, for every pound, you get a dollar thirty. We'll give you a dollar twenty-eight for that pound. Okay. So they're charging you a spread. They're not charging you commission. So whether you trade five pounds or you trade five thousand pounds, you're only getting the spread. Because somebody's got to make money. I mean, brokers have to make money, and they make money on the spread. Okay, Because they have to pay the liquidity provider. They have to pay all the electronics. They have to pay all the monitoring. You know, they have to pay their operation, and that's where they're – but it's a very, very small amount. On the most popular traded assets, like the euro dollar, it can be as little as four points. Four points is – a point is the fourth decimal to the right. So let me try to show you a better graphic explanation of exactly what a CFD is. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about a little bit more about how you might want to trade CFDs and what leverages and more specifics and also some strategies or ways you might. What are CFDs? The first thing you need to know is that CFDs are complex and risky financial products. It's important that you fully understand how they work before you decide to invest. Unlike share trading, you don't actually own the underlying asset you're trading in. A CFD is a derivative contract between you and a CFD issuer. When you trade CFDs, you're financially exposed to the changes in the value of an underlying asset while the contract remains open. The underlying asset might be a share, a commodity, a foreign exchange pair or a market index. You can go long, which means you buy a CFD expecting the underlying asset to increase in value, or going short on a CFD means selling it because you expect the underlying asset to decrease in value. How are CFDs risky? CFDs are highly leveraged investment products. So let's take a look at an example CFD investment. Say you have $5,000 to invest. If you open a long share CFD position with a value of $100,000, you'll have to pay an initial margin or collateral to the CFD issuer. In this case, a tiny proportion of the exposure, like 5% or $5,000. This leverage can make CFDs seem attractive, but because you're trading with leverage, both gains and losses are magnified and you can end up losing more than you put in. If the share price drops by 1%, you could face a $1,000 loss. That's one-fifth of your $5,000 investment before even considering fees and charges. Or worse, if an unexpected event results in a 20% fall in the opening share price, this is a $20,000 loss to you. That's your $5,000 investment gone and another $15,000 that you owe the CFD issuer. In some situations, even a stop-loss order may not prevent a loss of this kind. What's a margin call and an automatic closeout? If the market turns against your CFD position, you can close out your position and limit your losses, or if you keep your CFD position open, the CFD issuer will ask you to pay extra money quickly. This is known as a margin call. The CFD issuer may but may not close out your contract to prevent further losses. If your margin is not enough to cover your trading losses, you will still be legally obliged to make up the difference. Are CFDs suitable for me? You should only consider trading CFDs if you have extensive trading experience. Also, if you're used to trading in volatile market conditions and can afford to lose all of the money you put in and more. What else should I know? These are only some of the risks of trading CFDs. It's important that you read a CFD issuer's product disclosure statement, or PDS. Now, the, some of the other advantages of CFD trading is you can select the size of your trade. The CFD trading, you select the number of CFDs you wish to trade. Say, for with, this, with equity trades, one CFD is equal to one share. 
That's an easy hypothetical. If you wanted 10,000 shares of Barclay, in real life, you'd buy 10,000 shares. If you wanted 10,000 shares in CFD, you would buy 10,000 CFDs. When trading indices, Forex, or commodities, the value of one CFD varies depending on the instrument. You can see which number you are trading or by looking up the tick value in the instrument's market information. So CFDs are traded in the base currency of the market. But basically, when you set up a trade in CFDs, you can either look at exactly what you'd be trading or you can just put in the, the dollar amount you're willing to risk and the system will calculate it and show everything for you. You'll see exactly what the margin is, what your risk, and you set everything up ahead of time. There's no craziness out there. You can set up your CFD before you execute it. You put at where you want to take your profit. What So say you, you were buying the Barclays 10,000 shares at 280p, and you were willing to take profit at 300p. You could tell the system, whatever it hits 300p, even if for a blimp of an eye, close out my position. And the system will close your position. So even if it's two seconds after you open the trade, for some reason, the market jumped up for that two seconds to three, 300 pip, it closes it out. You also told can tell the system that if it falls below 270, 270 P, which is a 10 pip loss, close out my position because I don't want to lose anymore. And so you'll get closed out with a $100 loss. And the system just does it. But before you even enter your trade, you set up all of these parameters. It's not difficult. So you're always setting yourself up and covering your risk because CFD trading is leverage product, which means you only need to have a small percentage of your overall trade value known as margin in your account in order to open the trade. Now, generally, as long as you have enough money in your account, you have the margin requirement and you have money to cover the movement of the market, you don't need it throughout the day. But if you want to, if you said, okay, I know Barclays is going to go to 300. It moved against me today. Now, you don't have to close your trade at the end of the day. You don't have to even give up more money. Now, there is an overnight charge because you're actually, the broker's lending you money. It's a very small overnight charge. But you can keep those 10,000 shares open till tomorrow. So even if the market moved against you, you can keep that position until the market's in your favor. The only difference is if, if the Barclays, you put up the 1,400 pounds on the Barclays and it drops more than, say, the 20 or 30 cents, the broker might require you to take some more money out of your account and give it for him to hold because of your exposure. But you can select your trade size. You can select when to close. You can keep your trade open day after day after day. But remember, CFDs are leveraged product, which means that you only need a to deposit a small percentage of the full value of the trade, okay, which is called trading on margin. But it also ramps up your possible risk. Whatever possible profit you have, you also could expose the same amount of loss. So don't think it's a great it's a quick scheme overnight. Oh, I'm going to make that trade and it's going to jump up $10,000 and I'm going to make myself a fortune. If it can jump up $10,000, it can also fall $10,000. All that margin or leverage does is it allows you to use a much smaller amount of capital. So it's always involved. You have to understand your risk at all times when trading CFDs. When trading or investing anywhere, you should always understand your risk. The difference between a successful investor and one who loses everything is rarely defined by luck. On the contrary, the successful investor will approach each trade with the caution of a professional mountain climber, trying to predict each and every possible mishap and trying to take every step to avoid it. In Forex, this boils down to three basic elements. Know your asset, know your limitations, and set a win to loss ratio. Know your asset. Like the performer who makes tightrope walking seem easy, knowing what to invest in, when and how much are a result of hard work. Before investing in an asset, research it. The same computer you place trades with can be used to search for information, to Google the asset as it were. Look for news items, try to gauge market sentiment. Open some historical charts and check out how the asset has reacted in the past to various events. Now come up to the present and see how the chart compares with the day's news. 
try to define whether your asset will rise or fall and at what price you should open a position. Take a good look at the value fluctuations and set your stop loss and take profit point. Then make your move. Know your limitations. Leverage is a wonderful tool. Without it, you probably wouldn't be here. You'd never have been able to mobilize the cash necessary to make a noticeable profit from Forex in the first place. On the other hand, never invest more than you can afford to lose. Most gurus say never more than 2 to 5% of your equity. Calculate your trade volume, taking into account the leverage loss you could take at any point. And set both your lot size and stop loss values in accordance. Do these with a clear head and once your position is open, don't alter your limit orders based on some monetary win. Which brings us to the last point. Set a win to loss ratio. The moment a position begins to lose, reevaluate your trading position. Make sure you don't lose more than you win. You may have set your stop loss below a specific value, and yes, every position you open begins with the loss of the broker's spread. But if the asset is losing money, don't wait for miracles. It's always smarter and safer to invest with the market than against it. And if all those traders are abandoning an asset, you should too. You're not yet big enough to afford playing games and outthinking experienced speculators. To upgrade your trading so remember, you always have the cost of the spread. Now, the spread, as I mentioned before, is the difference between the buy and the sell price and the actual price. Spreads are very, very small. So here, for example, if the asset was trading at 250p, okay, if you wanted to sell it, you would pay 249. You would get paid 249. If you want to buy it, you would pay 251. So the spread is the difference between the buy and the sell, or three points. Because remember, in CFD trading, you need to always, you need to do two things, two actions. You need to buy and you need to sell. Now, spreads are not flexible. In this case, if the spread is three points, it's always three points. So in other words, if the asset goes skyrockets, you're not going to get, you know, broker doesn't change the spread. The spread for the asset is always that three points. You know, it, it's not a flexible or adjustable spread. So if the asset climbed from 250 to 260, the spread would be 259 and 261. So if you had bought the asset at 251 and it went up to 260, and you want to close your position, you would actually get closed out at 259. So you would have made the difference between your buy and your sell, or you would have made eight points. Okay. Because every CFD has a buy and a sell. I'll just let me get my markings off the screen here. Sorry about that. But as I also said, is you can set your buy order, your sell order, your stop loss, your take profit, all ahead of time. So before you place your trade, it's important to consider your risk management strategy. A key risk management technique is to place an order such as a stop loss that will automatically close the trade if the market reaches a certain level. To stop a stop loss order is an instruction that allows the platform to close your open position once it reaches a specific level set by you. This will, as the name CSB, at a price below the current market level and be triggered on losing trades to help you minimize your loss. You can also set limit orders. Limit order tells the computer that even though Barclays is trading at 280p and you wanna buy 10,000 shares, you only wanna buy it at 275. So the computer will set it all up. It'll call it's called an order. And when the, your specifications are hit, it'll execute your order. So even though Barclays is a 280p, the computer will wait for it to fall to 275. And if even if it falls on one second, it'll execute your buy. So you bought a 5p below what the market was when you looked at it. So it it allows you to get in the market at a better price. Because remember, markets don't move straight up. They bounce up and down, up and down, up and down. 
So a, le a limit order is also an instruction to close out a trade at a price that is better than the current market price. So you are you can also execute a limit order that's better, which means you're basically telling your computer, if the you'll buy at 275, if it falls to 270, close my position with a stop loss to minimize my loss. And when it hits 300, execute an order to close out my position at a profit. And you've set all of that up before you've made your trade. So having placed your trade with any stops or limits, your profit loss in your CFD trade will now fluctuate with each move in the market price. You can track the market price, see your stop loss, your profit and loss updates in real time and add new trades or close existing positions. Now, the fact is you can continually trade or close your stop loss just because you opened up with that price. You know, for instance, what I do is if I open up the trade at 275, I put my stop loss at 270 and I see the asset go up, say, to, to, to from 275 up to 285, I move my stop loss up to 280. So even if the market moves against me, I still get closed out with profit. So you can move your stop loss up there. You can have what we call a trailing stop loss. As the market climbs, it will continue to climb up behind it. You know, but you can change everything anytime you want. But setting up an order means you don't have to sit there glaring at your screen and then ready to act on a second's notice and you know get you know and not and, and just have your risk laying out there. It means you know you can breathe a little bit. So once you're ready to close your trade, you need to do the opposite trade of your opening position. Now, you know, our platform makes it very, very easy, almost all online platform. You just click close position and it'll close your position now. Okay. Period, then makes it very, very easy. By closing your trade, you net your net open profit and loss will be realized and immediately reflect in your credit. The second you close that CD, if you made profit, it goes into your account. If you made a loss, it comes out of your account. Your margin is not a cost to you. Your margin that you put out for that trade is just a deposit, just like when you bought a house. You bought a house for $100,000 and you put down a $1,000 deposit. At the, you know, at the end of the thing, the, the bank finances the $100,000, you get your $1,000 back. It's only a deposit. It is not a cost to you. So you don't have to worry about your margin. And it's back in your account, and your CFD is closed out. Your profits in there. So, say hypothetically, in the the Barclays situation, you put up fourteen hundred dollars, but you ended up taking a two hundred dollars loss. Guess what? Automatically, you're twelve hundred dollars back in your account. If it was the other way, and you made the two thousand dollar profit, thirty four hundred dollars back in your account instantly the minute you close out your position. So if you're ready, you can just get started trading. It's very, very easy. Just go to Legacy FX, open a demo account, or open a real money account, and just start buying, selling, and trading instantly. It's fast. It's free. You can get a demo account very easily. So hopefully, I've given you some information. Please make sure you download those three handouts I gave you. You see it under handouts. Download them and use them at your convenience at a later time. So I'm going to run you one little other presentation so you understand a little bit more about day trading. And then we're going to say goodnight. But let me pop this up and run it for you. Is the buying and selling of the same security within a single trading day in an attempt to profit from small changes in a security's price. Day trading is most common in stocks and foreign currencies. Day traders base their trades on strategies such as swing trading, arbitrage, candlestick patterns, and trend lines. These strategies are generally constructed on current market conditions and time of day. Day traders also must choose entry and exit points carefully and set physical stop loss orders or mental stop loss points to limit their potential downside and preserve enough capital to stay in the game. Day traders attempt to profit from small, short-term price movements, and it's difficult to earn large sums without large amounts of investment capital or the use of leverage. Traders also spend lots of money on commissions, so they must gain enough from their trades to earn a profit after commissions. Day trading is...
ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope you learned a little bit about CFD and the possibility of trading. And you can go to Legacy FX and enroll in their education academy, and you can learn as much as you want and continue trading on a demo account until you think you've had it mastered. So again, if you want to see a recorded version of this class, just use the same link you used to come to tonight's class in about 24 hours, and you'll see an unedited version of this class. Or wait till investing.com has had time to edit and clean it up, and you can go to investing.com under education and then look for webinars on demand. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Best wishes out there for a successful trading career.